thank you for investing in our new and latest technology, our smart release generation two technology. We are excited about the investment that you have made and we're excited to hear about the outcome of this new technology that we have to offer. Simple, safer, and reliable. And now, Nicole is going to walk you through some educational videos on how to install and operate our Smart Release Generation 2. Many of you may be wondering, what is Smart Release Generation 2? Well, I'm gonna tell you, the truth is, Anyone can turn a liquid into a solid. The challenge is in controlling the release of proper chemical levels over an extended period of time. Dover's controlled release chemistry solved this challenge for the cooling tower chemical industry. You can have the best of both worlds with this SRG2 platform. Control like a liquid and deliver with a solid. SRG2 brings the control ability of product feed to the table using the same coded technology that traditional smart release technology offers. Scale and corrosion products are controlled using your PTA, PTSA sensor. Product feed is initiated when your PTSA falls below the desired set point. Your inlet motorized ball valve will remain open until the desired treatment level is achieved in your system. Oxidizing biocide feed is initiated when the oxidizer level falls below a set point, typically using ORP reading if equipped in your system or through a control timer. Your non-ox biocide is initiated through timer control. With the proper controller in place at your customer's location, you can enjoy remote monitoring capabilities of your system along with automated alarms and scheduled service reports to see how your system is performing. Your SRG2 skid will arrive on site pre-plumbed and ready to be hooked up with water in and water out. All connection points to the SRG2 feeder skid are three quarter of an inch scheduled 80 PVC. Let's walk through some connection points of your SRG2 system all of which will be labeled on your skid or upon arriving to your site. First, we're gonna go over your drain connection, which is down here, which will allow you to drain individual feeders or the entire system when needed. The next connection point will be your supply water inlet connection to the scale of corrosion and non-oxidizing biocide feeders. Most application will use cooling tower recirculation water. The next one, is your discharge connection for the scale and corrosion and non-oxidizing biocide feeders. This connection outlet to point of injection into your cooling water system should be as short as possible, especially if overall system volumes are small. This connection is your discharge line for your oxidizing biocide out of the brominator. Lastly, this connection point is the inlet connection for your brominator. Dober recommends the use of city water as source water, but cooling tower recirculation water may be used as an alternative. After completing the system installation, before filling and priming your SRG2 system, you should confirm mechanical functions of your normally closed actuator valves, motorized ball valve, and your recirculation pump. To do so, using the handoff auto function of your system's controller, turn each relay you are confirming to the hand position and back off to ensure that valves function as intended. We're going to show you how to fill your smart release feeder with our BioClear DBNPA. First, you will use the feeder lid wrench to loosen the lid. Once loosened, remove the lid. Once the lid is removed, you will remove the feeder basket. If you are replacing product, remove the canisters and dispose of them appropriately. Then you will add the adequate amount of chemistry to the basket that will satisfy the demands of your cooling tower system. When adding these canisters, make sure the membrane side is face down and do not remove the red valve on these canisters. 
After the canisters are filled, you will replace the basket back into the Smart Release feeder. Your next step will be to replace and secure the feeder lid. Make sure you use the lid wrench to tighten the lid securely. We are going to show you how to fill your Smart Release feeder with their scale and corrosion tablets. First, you will loosen the wing nut on the tri-clamp lid. Once this is loosened, you will remove the lid and the gasket. After the lid is removed, you will remove the feeder basket to dispose of any of the spent tablets appropriately. After doing so, replace the basket into the Smart Release feeder. Then you will add the acceptable amount of tablets into the basket that will satisfy the demands of your cooling tower system and meet the requirements between service visits. Once the product has been added, replace the gasket and lid and secure with a tri-clamp and wing nut assembly. Confirm that the wing nut is securely fastened. Once the lid to the feeders are secure, slowly open the inlet and outlet valves to your smart release system. For your SRG2 system to work properly, Dober recommends the following sensor for your control flow loop. Your PTSA, your ORP, conductivity, and your flow switch. Dober's standard premium skid will also come equipped with a three-slot coupon rack for corrosion monitoring purposes. Smart Release Generation 2 Recirculation Mode. In this mode, the motorized ball valve on the inlet to the feeder is closed. The recirculation pump will continuously circulate water inside the feeder flowing top down over the top of the tablets creating a concentrated liquid chemistry. Osmotic pressure inside the feeder will force the active chemistry out of the polymer coated tablets providing the liquid chemistry ready to be fed on demand when needed. To note, the recirculation pump does not have to be ran continuously the percent time on will vary from site to site. Smart Release Generation 2 Operation and Feed Mode During the operation and feed mode of the SRG2 feeder, when the PTSA level in your system falls below the configured set point, the motorized ball valve relay will move from auto off to auto on. As the motorized ball valve opens, recirculating cooling water will enter the feeder through the bottom inlet, forcing the concentrated liquid chemistry out the top of the feeder. As the concentrated liquid chemistry enters the cooling system, it will recirculate through, and once the system is satisfied, based off of your configured controller deadband, the motorized ball valve relay will move from auto on to auto off. To satisfy the capacitor on the motorized ball valve, your minimum relay time on should be set to 15 seconds.